key members of the former president's Justice Department could face questioning from the House Select Committee investigating the insurrection. It comes as we're learning shocking details surrounding those final days inside the administration, including the Department of Justice. Joining me now is Ellie Honig, CNN senior legal analyst, former federal and state prosecutor. Ellie, I want to look at the characters here who were involved tangentially and otherwise. Let's start with Bill Barr. Yeah, John, lots of names, lots of potential witnesses, lots of drama inside the Justice Department. Bill Barr, of course, was Donald Trump's loyal attorney general for about two years until December 1st of last year, when Bill Barr had this shocking moment where he came out and publicly said, to date, we have not seen fraud on a scale that could have affected a different outcome in the election. That was pretty much the end of the longstanding Trump bar relationship. Barr was gone a few weeks later. In came Jeffrey Rosen, who had been number two at the Justice Department. He moves up and becomes the acting attorney general. And Richard Donahue becomes the number two. Now, Donald Trump wasted no time pressuring these two to try to get on board with his election fraud theme. Uh, he called them, and we know from Richard Donahue's notes that what Donald Trump was, told them to do was just say that the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the R Republican congressman. And as you just said with Ambassador Bolton, the chief of staff, Mark Meadows, got in on the act. He started emailing these two, giving them crazy theories about Italian satellites flipping votes. Donahue commented internally, pure insanity. One other interesting thing in those emails from Mark Meadows, he started raising the name of this guy, Jeffrey Clark. Get Jeffrey Clark involved. Okay, Jeffrey Clark, we just spoke with former Ambassador Bolton about that as well. Jeffrey Clark was the acting assistant attorney general of the Civil Rights Division. Where does he fit in this and how much pull did he have? So Bolton was correct that, that Jeffrey Clark falls below Rosen and Donahue on this sort of DOJ pecking order. However, Clark was trying to run the coup from inside DOJ. It turned out Clark was communicating directly with Donald Trump, unknown to the superiors at DOJ, tried to get them to send this crazy letter to Georgia, which they refused to do. But here's where I really disagree with Bolton. Jeffrey Clark tried to take over. We've heard people have talked publicly now about this meeting that happened at the White House, which people have said was like the game show The Apprentice, but it was deadly serious where they were both making their case for AG. Jeffrey Clark's pitch to Donald Trump was, choose me and I've got your back on election fraud. Rosen's pitch was, choose him and I'm quitting and Donahue's quitting and it's going to be a mess for you. Donald Trump ultimately backed off, but it was that close to Jeffrey Clark becoming attorney general. Yeah, it was not for lack of trying. Right, absolutely. All right, where does the current attorney general stand in this drama? Yeah, Merrick Garland's got some real work to do. I think he's got three major tasks. First, he has to reestablish DOJ's independence. He's done a good job. About six weeks ago, we issued new rules about keeping DOJ separate from communications from the White House. Importantly, cooperation with Congress. We've got subpoenas that are coming soon. Garland has already said he's not going to block DOJ employees from testifying. That should clear the way or at least remove one of the obstacles to people like Rosen, Donahue, maybe Barr, Jeffrey Clark testifying. And finally, there's the question about were there crimes there? I think people can fairly disagree. I believe at a minimum there were various at least potential federal crimes. And I think Merrick Garland has an obligation at least to open a serious investigation and take a look here. It is turning really into a mountain of evidence here about how Trump allies tried to overturn this election, even including one inside the Justice Department. Now, all of these details and documents, they're being turned over to the January 6th Select, select Committee with key interviews that are expected in the coming days. That includes from the acting attorney general at the time and his deputy, both of whom were forced to repeatedly push back on these false claims of election fraud. New details paint a clearer picture of President Donald Trump's attempts to stage a coup in the final days of his presidency. Shortly after the 2020 election, Trump is said to have pressured top officials at the Justice Department to support his baseless allegations of election fraud in the presidential election. On December 27th, Trump spoke to Acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and Acting Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue and reportedly said, just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the R Congressman. This is the Justice Department. And in America, the president is in king. The law is king. So that's the first thing. Uh, he has an obligation to the law of the United States. 
In a draft letter from the very next day that was obtained by ABC News, an acting DOJ department head falsely wrote the Justice Department had identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election in multiple states, including the state of Georgia. Jeffrey Clark was pushing for the Justice Department to step in and wanted to urge the governor of Georgia to call a special session to consider this important and urgent matter. But his bosses, Rosen and Donahue, refused to sign on, denying any evidence of fraud. And just five days later, on January 2nd, Trump held the infamous phone call with Georgia's election officials. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. On January 3rd, Rosen met with Trump for hours at the White House. Rosen's chief of staff, Patrick Hovakimian, testified last month that he had drafted a resignation letter that day, fearing Trump would oust Rosen and replace him with Clark. Around the same time, concerns were reportedly mounting among top military officials that Trump would attempt a coup. The book, I Alone Can Fix It, by two Washington Post reporters, recounts that Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mark Milley and other top military officials had also planned to resign in the event Trump ordered them to do something illegal, dangerous, or ill-advised. On January 6th, Trump urged Vice President Mike Pence to overturn the election results, something that was not within his power to do. Then Trump urged a crowd of his supporters to march to the Capitol. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. We're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down, and we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And the picture that is emerging is just how perilously close this country came to crisis and how several top officials work steadfastly behind the scenes to fight back. And Brianna, we are likely to see even more of these damning details come out. That's because the Justice Department here has given the green light to former top officials to talk. They will be talking to the House Committee, the Select Committee, uh, the Chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Dick Durbin, has said that he wants to talk to Jeffrey Clark. The big question, though, remains how much information will we get from the White House? Will uh, the Biden team assert, you know, the executive privilege for the Trump team's uh, communications? So it all remains to be seen, but a lot more is likely to come out here, Brianna. You really painted a very complete picture there with that story, Jess. Thank you so much for that.